I would like to go ahead and introduce Ben, Ben Milamed. He is the Principal Security Architect with Palo Alto Networks. Uh, ben is going to be giving us a presentation on rapid breach response, and if time permits, I believe, Ben, you're going to be going, doing an actual demonstration of that. Is that correct? Correct. Fantastic. With that, then, I will go ahead and stop sharing my screen and hand it right over to you. Awesome. Thank you, Charles. No problem. Awesome. You guys can see my presentation good? Yep, screen's coming across great. <clears throat> so it's a pleasure to have you all here. Um, as Charles said, we'll discuss today uh, how uh, automation can take part and should take part in your uh, threat response uh, procedures. Uh, so for today's agenda will start by introducing Cortex XOR for those of you who aren't familiar with it yet. Uh, we'll then move on and discuss our in-house rapid reach response program and how it can benefit you guys as well. And our third chapter will be discussing uh, how automation can take part in threat response, different scenarios and uh, a specific use case that I will uh, uh, show you guys and we'll end this session with a scenario based uh, demonstration so let's dive right into uh, what is a, a SOAR product what is XOR so Cortex XOR is a, a security orchestration automation and response platform which allows you to seamlessly integrate all of your uh, security tools uh, streamlining your um, incident response workflow and also it allows you to pull any uh, any type of data whether it's raw data or our actual actual alerts which uh, um, make the, the platform also an alert management platform um, that has all the relevant data and then we can build on top of it our playbooks, which are our automations. And what are SOAR key elements? So we have a classification mapping, we have integrations, we have playbooks, and we have scripts. Of course, we have many more features, but I want to discuss these four key features because they directly relate to automation. So starting with classification and mapping, XOR automatically uh, categorizes and prioritizes alerts based on any user chosen uh, criteria. And also it makes sure that all the alerts fields are mapped in a unified way in order to fit all of our out of the box content. So besides that, we have our integrations. Uh, which, as I mentioned, uh, allows you to seamlessly connect with various security tools uh, and, uh, and systems. And, and this connectivity, sorry, <coughs> um, serve you like a, a central hub. XOR becomes the middleman and it can help the firewall talk with your sim and it, it can help your uh, active direct, uh, directory talk to uh, to XOR, uh, etc. And <clears throat> with that, we gather and process all the incoming data in XOR, uh, hence enhancing our threat response because we have all data in one location. Moving on to playbooks, Playbooks are like predefined workflow uh, uh, in a Cortex XOR that both automates and uh, orchestrates uh, all of your incident response uh, procedures. Now, with that, we can ensure that all of our um, uh, response actions will always be consistent and efficient across all different incidents. So we won't have one analyst that does something uh, in, a, in a certain way 
and another in a different way. The playbooks make sure that if we want a certain approach to uh, address a, an incident, it will be executed the same uh, over all incidents. And lastly, we have our scripts, which is a custom, uh, which you have a custom scripting capabilities there. And it allows you to like um, tailor any kind of solution, uh, automation, uh, that you need to your specific uh, use case. So besides that, besides these four elements, please keep in mind that um, XOR is very flexible, which means any content, whether it's out of the box or locally created content can be edited and um, refined to your needs. So I want to show you uh for examples of this key element so here we can see like um the uh, mapping capabilities and alert was pulled an actual alert was pulled from uh, one of our uh, configured instances uh, from cortex xdr and uh, as you can see on uh, the uh, left pane uh, we have the mapping from uh, XO fields, uh, uh, sorry, two XO fields from the actual alert uh, fields. So this keeps all of the uh, uh, data uh, laid in XOR unified. We can do the same for any other instance and security tool. We then have the integration. So here we can configure an integration by our own needs um you have like for each integration the the connect params and also the the uh, collect params so if you just want to use the um the integration uh, uh, commands you don't have to pull incidents in you will be able to use it as part of your playbook but it won't fetch incidents so you can do whatever you want here as well this is our uh, playbook library. You can see on the uh, uh, left pane, different kinds of playbooks. This is the cloud threat hunting persistent playbook, which allows you to hunt for a persistence activity across uh, all three CSPs, main CSPs, which are G uh, GCP, AWS, and Azure. All of this playbook is being executed automatically after it was a, a defined, designed, and developed by us, of course. And lastly, our scripts, out of the box scripts. This one, for example, is for HTTP requests that I will show you later on uh, how it's uh, being used in our uh, Rapid Bridge Response program. Uh, and of course, you can create your own script. You have like a, a helper here and so on. Awesome. So let's move on to our uh, in-house rapid bridge response program. Uh, addressing the, the ongoing cyber threat landscape, as most of you are familiar from your day-to-day -day job, we encounter um, new zero days vulnerability uh, and the breaches on a daily, weekly basis. And Initially, we, when, when these threats or uh, breaches are published or being published, we don't have a lot of information. So we need to, to try and address it in the best way with all the data available as soon as possible. And this is why we need a proper preparation done using our automation capabilities. Uh, because if we, we needed to start from scratch uh, every time, um it will take a lot of time to build a playbook to build the scripts to build the logic to build the strategy to to respond to this kind of uh, of scenarios uh not to talk about what what happens if an analyst do it manually of course so by by leveraging this automation you, you could save anywhere between five to twelve hours when uh, when you release a response playbook to a new to a new breach, besides that, you can even 
uh, execute the playbook using jobs. It can run, be, be ran every five minutes, 10 minutes. So if you are using several data sources, like, and we are at the begin, beginning of a, 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 a new a zero day publish or something like that, and the indicators I, are keep being updated into these blogs, analysts would have to go into these blogs, different blogs, and try and find the, the deltas. But here, uh, the playbook does all of this automatically. So once we have configured and tailored the playbook to fit for this specific breach, it will rerun uh, repeatedly on uh, every interval uh, you wish. So how we actually reduce this time? Let's see it. So this is like uh, the uh, incident response lifecycle workflow playbook wise. We start each playbook in our rapid, uh, rapid breach response program with collecting and enriching uh, indicators. We're tapping into different uh, um, data sources and we pull all of this raw data, but we want to enrich it. The enrichment adds um, technical depth and context uh, which ensures that our uh, uh, indicators are relevant and uh, actionable. And with this uh, enriched data set, uh, the detection become more than just an alerting system. It represents our ability to distinguish between benign events and in general threats, whether they emerge from um, existing alerts, uh, targeted hunting, or um, new detection uh, methodologies that you implemented in your own product. We now want to uh, deep dive into the technical forensics. So it's about understanding uh, um, the alert, examining uh, uh, log entries, analyzing network traffic, and basically leveraging um, all tools at your uh, disposal to, to assess the scale uh, and the impact of the potential breach. And I'll say it again, all of this flow is being executed automatically. Each step pulls the result from the previous step and use it uh, uh, directly. So, so now when we're done with our three first steps, we want to transition from insight uh, into action. And the, uh, <clears throat> sorry. the remediation phase is like our um, technical uh, countermeasure uh, uh, in order to neutralize the threat. So we deploy tailored solution, whether they, they adjust firewall rules, uh, altering access controls, uh, blocking IOCs, of course, or isolating a compromised uh, asset. In, in our final step, uh, we want to uh, uh, restore and rebuild our affected uh, systems and uh, devices uh, in order to ensure they're, first of all, operational, but most important, hardened against future exploitations. So, so this life cycle uh, represents our step-by-step -step, uh, response to a newly discovered threat. A thread, sorry, which will later on will show you how it's being implemented in Exor, in our so, uh, solution. So, as we discussed, a, prepa a, a preparation, a proper preparation is needed. So, as you all know, it's all about IR readiness. So, we need to uh, strategically build. Uh, everything we need uh, for our automated incident response flow. Think of having like a toolkit always ready where every tool is designed for a specific function. This has our uh, integration commands or tasks and playbooks. And these sub playbooks act as this toolkit for cyber incident within Exor. 
whether it's a, a, for a, a data enrichment like IP enrichment or, a, or domain enrichment or to a hunt for these uh, indicators and identify uh, any malicious activity or for uh, remediation uh, purposes to quickly uh, mitigate and address like uh, uh, any threat or issue that comes up. So these are not just like generic playbooks. These are predefined and tailored for efficiency. We want them to not like use quota. We, uh, we don't want them to, to uh, the queries to be uh, large and take a lot of time. We want it to be rapid because we need to answer this breach now. So I know that every different breach or zero day or uh, a new vulnerability has its own like unique uh, data or, uh, or indicators. And that's why we create these skeletons to be ready to be adjusted uh, for any new breach or zero day. So all you need to do is just create your cyber toolkit, your SOAR toolkit, and then just adjust it. Awesome. So uh, now we can see how automation is actually help you guys and should take part in your threat response workflows. And firstly, I want to start I won't start with the rapid breach response program. Uh, we'll sit on the uh, uh, last uh, um, chapter on the uh, demonstration. I want to start uh, with our uh, uh, with another use case that shows the strengths of automation in a uh, breach response. So around a year, a year and a half ago, we have released a new pick. What is pick does? So a lot of breaches, a lot of uh, uh, cyber attacks uh, uses uh, RDP in order to uh, move laterally within the uh, victim uh, environment. And um, the RDP has a, a, a cache mechanism that uh, reduces the uh, bandwidth uh, usage and also um, uh, it reduces the, the bandwidth with, uh, uh, sorry, usage in order to, to allow faster processing of, uh, of the images of the RDP, of the uh, desktop. So any static uh, part of your screen uh, likely to be cached and stored in this cached file. So knowing that we have these files, we know that uh, and also this uh, uh, feature is on by default, uh, if I remember correctly, correct me if I'm wrong. But knowing that we have so much power that cached some, even some of the, um, the attacker uh, activity while it was in our uh, organization, it, it should be taken under consideration for our uh, threat response. Uh, we need to check it, but doing it manually can be exhausting. And I will show you why. First of all, this is the full flow in order to um, to process and, and extract relevant information from these files. Okay, so how do how did we do it in a, a using Excel? Okay, so in order to collect this uh, RDP bitmap cache files, we are using an integration, Cortex XDR. We are fetching files using a, a, a developed command available for everyone, of course and we fetch the cached files back to XOR. Now that we have the files, we want to process them. So uh, ANSI, I think it's the uh, uh, friend cert, has released a, a tool that calls uh, called the BMC tool uh, that allows you to process these cached files, extract the tiles from them, and even create a panoramic 
uh, image from all of these tiles. Okay, so what we've done, we took this open source tool and implemented it within EXO. So another um, manual flow has become a script, which will be later on a task in a playbook. We now have the panoramic image of all of these tiles, and we want to extract the interesting data out of them. So we thought about using OCR. So we uh, created another script that uses the Tesseract OCR. But first, uh, we saw that uh, before OCRing an image, it should be uh, in a certain quality, in a certain color, in a certain sharpness. So we created a script for image processing. So now we have the BMC tools, the image processing, and the OCR. All of this is done automatically and can be run on every uh, incident or by any job. It can be run like on random endpoints in a, a certain interval. So we have the, uh, we process the, the cached files. Uh, we then uh, process the, the output image. And then we use, we used OCR to extract all the strings within that were present in these types. And now we want to extract the actual IOCs uh, from uh, the extracted text. So we move on to the analysis part. So what we do there? First, we use what Dor mentioned, uh, Dor, sorry, mentioned earlier, uh, our indicator extraction capabilities. So we run using regex over the text. It can be a lot of text. So, uh, and as you all know, it's OCR, so it might be partial, okay? So we want to extract using, in, uh, using Greg says all relevant indicators, whether it's domain, IP, and for this specific use case, you have also data, uh, Windows date and time indicators, uh, executable indicators, and so on. And here uh, we knew that we have a lot, a lot of text to process. Uh, I can tell you that I did the same flow manually in my former wall um, under uh, GovIL, and it took time. Uh, I was uh, up at least two nights going over these panoramic images and trying to extract interesting data because I knew that some of them would be partial and might, uh, I might uh, miss them. So we added two capabilities here. One is the uh, string similarity script and the other is the string uh, sifter tool. So let's start with the string similarity. We created a script that takes all of the strings, each string separately from the extracted text and compares it to, um, compares its similarity to the MITRE uh, software list, okay? So we'll have like a ratio that tells us if the string extracted is a uh, look the same or is exa exactly uh, uh, similar to one of the uh, MITRE software uh, list. The second thing we did, uh, Mendiant has a magnificent tool that called um, String Sifter. This is an ML tool that was trained over, uh, I think, 8 million strings uh, and they taught him which uh, strings are suspicious and which aren't. And I thought about taking this, uh, this, this tool and run it over my extracted OCR text. So it's usually used for like strings for PEs, yeah? But now we are using it on OCR extracted uh, text. So, also, this tool as well has been implemented as a script in our system. And now, instead of the user 
logging into the machine, extracting the cache file, or using his uh, XDR solution, of course. Process it and extract the string from them or move it or, or, or look at it and try to find it by, by its eyes. And then extract indicators and try to find similar strings. We took all of this process and we created a fully automated process that can randomly uh, pick an endpoint, check if there are cached files, pull them and process them and extract and show you what uh, interesting um, IOCs and information uh, found during this process, uh, which will be just look. So this is just, for example, our BMC tool script that was implemented uh, in XOR. And we also have here the uh, RDP bitmap cache detect and hot playbook, which concludes all of our uh, procedure. And this is the incident layout. So for each incident, we provide a layout. We populate all the data collected into a layout so the user will be able to, to, to get a, like an arranged view of all the incident details. So in this layout, sorry, let me bring back to it. So in this layout, you can see the first section is the string similarity. So the scripts found three strings, okay? The mimicats, which has similarity ratio of one because it looks exactly the same. We have imicats and nimicats. So imagine that we had like only these two, okay? We might not uh, get back that uh, a software MITRE list, one of MITRE software list has been found in our extracted tests. So this script, this automation allows us to uh, better enhance our detection capabilities. Under this one, we have the string sifter section and we have all of our uh, processed uh, strings with their rank. And as you can see, we succeeded, the, the script succeeded to identify suspicious strings such as the uh, proton.me domain, um, the uh, email, the, the full email address of that might be used uh, in the attacker activity, uh, some DLL files, even though it's not DLL, it's DIL, it's still uh, present for our analyst and so on. So this is, a, a, in my opinion, a perfect example of how automation can, can ease up your threat response procedures. And like spending time and telling uh, analysis to do uh, stuff like this, like uh, on weekly or daily basis will take most of his days, if not more. This playbook will be executed, I think less than um, five to 10 minutes, including the pooling and processing. And will you will have the full results, I think under 10 minutes. And we now can move on to our scenario best demonstration. And I've picked the 3CX uh, desktop app supply chain attack uh, that we've encountered uh, at March 23. And uh, okay, so why, let's talk about, uh, about it a bit. Why, why did we choose to respond to this uh, breach? So the, the 3CX uh, desktop app supply chain attack uh, received like a significant attention. Uh, it, the product was widely used uh, according to Cortex expense. It was used by more than uh, 247,000 uh, systems across the globe. And the fact that the, um, the software installer from the, the actual developer's site uh, was tainted makes it uh, especially stealthy. So users, organizations uh, would have little reason to, to, to suspect 
that downloading the file from the official website would be malicious. Additionally, uh, the attacker has uh, implemented backdoor uh, capabilities uh, that could uh, allow him to persist present, uh, sorry, presence on the affected systems and maybe lead to further exploits <coughs> or data breaches in the futures. So when we considered the, the use, uh, sorry, the usage and the activity seen on many customers, we, we have created this response playbook using our skeletons and our already pre-built scripts. So let's see it in action. And I would first like to start with um, Google Trends. So you can see uh, the peak arises around the 29th uh, of uh, March. And it reaches its peak on this series. And the playbook that you are about to see was released on the on the March March uh, 31. So it took us less than 24 hours uh, from the official uh, publishers to release this playbook. So what you can see here, we have uh, an indicator collection tasks. You provide a blog URL and it will extract only IOCs from this blog, no matter the type text or what uh, present in this uh, blog. We also have the same advanced hunting uh, uh, section here, which uh, incorporates like same dedicated queries to hunt for these uh, suspicious uh, activities. And also we want to hunt for indicators. We don't need like a complicated query to do it. So we have a generic playbook that allows you to hunt for indicators across different products in a, in a parallel way. And with that done, we have the remediation phase. So we allow either um, manual or automatic remediation. And as you can see, it's block indicators generic. So in this playbook, we have also generic playbooks for domain, IP, and account. And each uh, sub-playbook, each generic playbook, has all of the, rel of of the, all of the supported uh, security tools uh, that you can remediate an account with. So let's say you have Okta and Slack and Active Directory using this playbook, using automation, it will be blocked across all three products uh, automatically. And we have also phases here for mitigations where we suggest manual mitigations. And of course, on your side, uh, you can automate it. So let me stop here for a second and show you some of the results. So as you can see, we have the uh, collection tasks here and we have all of the results as you can see here uh, beneath it. So we have domains and we have IPs and we have hashes. We extracted <coughs> IOCs from the three different blocks. Okay, we save time. And every new indicator that adds up to these blocks will be uh, spare our interval, execution interval will be pulled also uh, as a delta to our team, the threat intelligence module. Okay, so also here automatically the uh, Yara rules and the Sigma rules and uh, has been downloaded and you can download them directly from the incident forum. Uh, we have here the SIM execution and also the endpoint uh, solution, our Cortex-XDR uh, execution query and results, of course. And here you can see under the um, uh, block, uh, under the mediation section, uh, the user chose to do it manually, but let's 
uh, change it to automatically for a second. And I want you to see how all of the collected indicators are auto-populated in, into our block indicators playbook. So, for example, here we have the inputs and all of these indicators has moved to this playbook and will later on be split into domains, IPs, accounts, and we'll get the proper response automatically or semi-automatically or fully manually as you want. We can move on. And we are done with the deployment of the uh, uh, Sigma and the other pools. So I would like to stop here for a second as well. And as per uh, Cheryl's uh, question, uh, there is a better quality and enlarged uh, uh, demo. And I will share it with Charles once, we, once I'm done with the presentation. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Ben. So what we can see here in this, uh, um, maybe I can enlarge it a bit. No. Okay. So this is the, um, the rapid bridge response layout. Each rapid bridge response uh, uh, incident has its own layout. And we want to show here the user with the most important data. So we have several tabs here. I will discuss two of them. The first one, the incident info tab. The analyst, the, first of all, XOR has auto-populated all of this, okay, all of this data into the layout and into team. Yeah. So we see all of the indicators present in our team. Okay, and their verdicts and their when they was first seen, the number of indicators collected. To the right, you have the playbook descriptions. Sorry, usually we have a lot of data there and we want to uh, allow the user to read it if he needs during the, the incident uh, investigation. And also the signature files beneath the playbook description. And as for our uh, second tab, let me jump right to the IL procedures tab. And this one is much more interesting. Why? Because here automation, it, it actually uh, take action. Okay, this all tab is, has been built using a dynamic section. So, uh, I've mentioned scripts, so you can build a script to be used in a, in a playbook as a task or as a command. And you can also build a dynamic section script that will be used in layout sections. Okay. So what we did here, we built a script that knows how to collect uh, relevant uh, tasks that needed to be completed in our playbook by the uh, section headers and show the uh, current status. It's like an IR tracker, yeah? Automatic uh, IR tracker that update and refreshes automatically. So it shows you the number of tasks. It shows you also how many remaining tasks you have. And if we'll drill down to the tasks themselves that you can see uh, on the uh, bottom left, so it's divided by section and we look at the threat hunting uh, um, task. We can see that we have two tasks. They are both completed uh, for documentation purposes. We can see when the task names and if we we'll click on the task ID, we can jump right into the task results and see all of this data there. So the power of automating all of this process instead of pivoting manually uh, between it a lot, has a lot of uh, advantages. And I think this was uh, the last part of my uh, presentation and we can now move on to uh, questions. 
If you have any, I would be happy to answer them. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Ben. Yeah, if anyone does have any questions, please go ahead and throw them into the chat at this time. Uh, in the meantime, once Ben does get me the, the higher resolution version of the video, when we put the video up on YouTube of this session, we'll probably put either a second video or append the higher quality version of this video onto the end of it so everyone has easy access to it. So uh, apologies for the inconvenience there, but we will uh, we'll do our best to get that rectified for you. Uh, yeah. Let me apologize as well if the air resolution wasn't good enough for you to be to to track my uh, presentation flow. We'll fix that by sending you an higher quality one. I appreciate that, but not a problem. We will we will obviously get this taken care of for everyone to be able to see it later. So sure. uh, have not been getting any questions in. Um, give another minute or two if anyone has anything they'd like to ask. Um, I personally would like to say, Ben, that was to me that was utterly fascinating. I've I've heard about a lot of this. I've never actually seen it in action before. So even being able to see the general idea of how this is done is just absolutely mind boggling to me. Uh, we did get a question from Turner. Uh, is there any way to run a script on a manual, manual ad IOC? Um, okay, so I'm not sure if I, I've got your attention, but I have a script, okay? As I said, fully customizable. So I have a script that can pull indicators back to wherever I, I walk in. So I have a playground, I have an incident. I can pull an indicator from the team uh, and process it in any way I want. So first, I, I can use the CLI, X or CLI, in order to do it. Let me see if I have a screenshot here that shows uh, XOR CLI. One second. Okay, so you see this one, this CLI at the bottom of the right screenshot. It allows you to run uh, the commands directly from there. Okay, let's say in an incident war room or in your uh, playground, which is more generic way to run commands without any relation to any incidents. So once I get the indicator into uh, my current incident, okay, I can do whatever I want there. I can either run a playbook based on the incoming indicator. I can either um, uh, run a, another script on it and basically do whatever I want with, with any uh, uh, content uh, present in Excel. Turner says, thank you. Fantastic. Is there anyone else who has any other questions or anything? Jirlin's agreeing, super interesting. Um, so with that okay. said then, um, I will add my thanks as well to both you and Dror again for these absolutely fantastic presentations. We really appreciate you guys taking the time to do this for us. Uh, I know I'm looking forward to reviewing this video as well. Um, there's so many little things that I just, there's so many things I know that I don't know about that I can't wait to learn more on all of this. Um, so is there anything else you wanted to add last minute then, Ben, or no? Who can not love XOR? Amazing tool. Got me there, sure, yes. Yeah. All right, so if you can go ahead and uh, stop sharing Ben there. Sure. Um, I'll go ahead and turn off presenter mode for you. Ben, thank you very much again for everything. We really appreciate it. Sure thing, you guys. Thank you. Yep.